Let's make an astronaut. In this video, I'm gonna go over how I made the astronaut for the last video and then do a little bit of texturing and animation as well. If you'd really like an astronaut for your videos, but you're not quite good enough at Blender or you haven't got the time, you can go on my Patreon and get all of the Blender files from these videos for a dollar a month. Pretty good deal and you'll be supporting the channel, so it'd be greatly appreciated. But that's enough self-promotion, let's get on with the video. So firstly, you wanna start off with some sort of basic mesh of a person. You could just make it from scratch, but I just downloaded one from the internet. This particular one is just from free3d.com. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Once it was imported into the project, I went into edit mode and deselected the hands and feet. I had separate objects for the gloves and shoes, so for this part, I just wanted to have the suit isolated on its own. Just a quick disclaimer here, I didn't make the shoes that are a part of this model. Originally I did try and make them, but I'd never really modelled shoes before, and everyone will know that your first attempt at modelling something is never as good as you want it to be. So instead, I did what I do best, which is copy somebody else's work. Once the hands and feet were deselected, I pressed Ctrl I, which inverts the selection, and then I deleted the vertices. Then I jumped into sculpt mode to actually start making the shape of the suit. I turned on dynamic topology and then turned off symmetry, and then I started using the inflate brush to fatten the suit up a little bit. It's a good idea to change the detailing to constant detail and use a number of about 10 and then press the button that's called detail flood fill. Detail flood fill is kind of like a subdivision surface modifier, it just adds a universal amount of geometry over the whole mesh which makes it better for sculpting details. Next up I started using the cloth brush. This is my first time using the cloth brush in Blender and I didn't watch any tutorials before doing this, I just got stuck in. Basically from what I've worked out, you just click somewhere and drag your mouse around and it starts creating creases. I couldn't really work out if there was a technique to get specific looking creases, so I just kind of did something in one spot and if I didn't like it I would Control Z and redo it until it looked kind of cool. So it's a bit of trial and error just getting it to look how you like, I guess there's no real right or wrong way to do this anyway. I just tried to get some cool looking creases over the whole mesh essentially. The cloth brush does tend to make the mesh collapse on itself a bit in some places, so I used the inflate brush again to expand those parts of the mesh where it had gone a bit mental. The next step is kind of optional, but probably recommended if you're going to be using this for animation like I did. As you'll probably know, sculpting in Blender absolutely ruins the topology of a mesh. So I exported an OBJ and then used Instant Mesh. If you haven't used Instant Mesh before, it's an open source free piece of software that's really good, highly recommend it. You basically bring in a mesh, tell it how many faces you want it to have, and then it does some clever AI stuff and works out the topology flow for you. So if you want to do this, here's a rapid fire Instant Meshes tutorial. Open your OBJ and then set the target vertex count to how many vertices you want the mesh to have hit solve and it will kind of work out the topology flow. This is an indication of how you want it to look and if there's some areas where it's not really working or it looks a bit weird you can use the comb brush and kind of guide where the topology is supposed to go. Once that's done hit the second solve button and then press export mesh and then hit the extract mesh button and then just save it wherever you want it to go. Make sure you put .obj on the end otherwise it gives you a weird error. So then what you can do is jump back into Blender, hide the high resolution sculpt that you did and then import the obj of the remesh that you've just done from instant meshes and you'll have have a lovely retopologized mesh. For some reason, Instant Mesh chucks it out absolutely full of sharps. So go into edit mode, select everything, press Control E, and then just do clear sharp, which will get rid of all those blue lines. The rest of the model is really simple, so I'm not gonna talk about how to model that particularly, especially because I cheated and stole some boots from online. The hands are from the same model of the human base mesh, and I just used the inflate brush on them to make them a bit fatter again. And the helmet is basically just a sphere that I cut the sides off and then duplicated the front to make the visor. The harness and straps are really simple as well. I just added a plane and then added a mirror modifier to it so it would be the same on the other side of the body and then I just extruded one of the edges and kind of made it follow around the body so it looked like a strap and you can turn on clipping and make them meet in the middle so they join up in places. I did that really roughly and then just added a subdivision surface modifier to make it a bit smoother and then I also added a solidify modifier to make the straps have a bit of thickness. And the last detail is these couple of vent pipes or whatever they are on the front of the suit. The model of this suit is called a NASA ACES suit I believe and I basically just went on Google Images and looked at some reference photos and then kind of matched what I saw on that and modelled something that looked similar. So now the suit is all modelled and sculpted, we have to make a shader to make it look nice and real. It's quite a big shader, it's certainly the biggest one I've ever made, but I just kept adding little details to it and it just kept getting better and better and I got a bit carried away. But it looks really cool. So it starts off with a really simple principle shader setup. I went on textures.com and found, I think it was like a sack texture or something. I have a albedo texture, which is like the diffuse colour. Um, there's a roughness map, a normal map and then a displacement map as well. So I did a bit of colour correction to make it orange because originally it was green. And then I made it look a bit dirty by doing a technique that's called dirty vertex colours. Basically if you go into vertex paint mode and just search for dirty vertex colours, it's kind of like an ambient occlusion effect where it will look at the crevices of a mesh and make them darker and the kind of 
flatter bits will be white essentially. If you change the highlight angle to 90 degrees, that's the one that I found worked best for this. And you can see on the side here, it creates a new vertex color group and you can access that with an attribute node in the shader and type in whatever the name of it is. And then you can use that to basically mix into the colors of the suit. So I multiplied it over the kind of diffuse color, which made all the crevices of the suit look a bit dirty. Then on top of that, I made the suit look even more roughed up with a noise texture. At the moment, the vertex colors thing is only really affecting the creases of the mesh. And I wanted to have the whole suit look a bit more uneven. So I multiplied another noise texture on top, which added some darker patches to the suit overall and made it look a bit more random. Then I added a few logos as well to add a bit of detail. A really easy way to do this is you can create a new UV map just for the logos and then basically unwrap those faces and just apply that texture. So this is the UVs just for the NASA logo and you can see the rest of the suit is just tiny in the corner and then those faces on top of the logo are taking up the whole of the texture space. And then you can bring in the logo and just position it by moving the UVs around. You have to tell the image texture which UV map you want it to use, especially in this situation because I'm using multiple in the same shader. So add a UV map node, select the right map and then plug it into the image texture. I used pretty much the same technique to add some stitches onto the suit as well on the seams. So what you can do is select a face and then hold control, go further up the mesh and click again and it will connect those faces in a line. And then you can create a new UV map and unwrap just the section for the stitches and then use that UV map to apply the stitches just on those faces. This is what the stitch texture looks like, it's literally something I made in Photoshop just by drawing a dashed line with a brush. This is the stitches on their own, just a black and white map, and then I can use that to plug that into several things just to add some more detail. I did exactly the same thing for the NASA logo just to add an American flag onto one of the sleeves as well. And then all of those things combined together go into the base colour of the principal shader. And then as well as the base colour you also have the normal roughness and displacement textures that get combined together in the principal shader and make a really nice looking suit. And especially if you use something like an HDRI, it really makes it ping and you can see all of the different fibres of the suit have a little bit of different roughness and look really realistic. That's the modelling and texturing done, so now all you have to do is animate it to do some cool stuff. So this is the rig that I built. It looks a little bit complicated, but that's only because I've made some custom shapes for all of the bones. It's pretty much just the default basic human mesh that comes with Blender. The only thing I really added was making the hands and feet IK bones so that when I moved them it would move the legs and arms at the same time. It just makes it a little bit easier for the animation, especially doing things like jumping. So to finish it off, I'm going to really quickly animate a zero gravity jump like in the original video. The first thing I do when I'm animating is go to keying and change active keying set to location and rotation. So whenever I press I, it adds a keyframe. I'll set up my first pose and then hit I with everything selected, which adds a keyframe for the first frame. Then I jumped ahead about 10 frames and set the next pose, which is going to be a crouching position. The beauty of using an IK system here is I can just grab the hands and the waist and drag them down and the knees will bend automatically for me and the feet will stay where they're supposed to be. Then I select everything again, add another keyframe, then jump forward another 10 frames or so, and then create a pose just before the astronaut's feet have left the floor. So this is like the last stage of the jump before actually taking off. Select everything again, add another keyframe, and then create a pose in midair where he's completely left the floor. And then just for fun, I made a pose where his legs are tucked into his chest a bit and he starts to do a backflip. And voila! So hopefully without going into mind-numbing detail, that has explained how to model, texture and animate an astronaut for you. If you guys have enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. And remember, if you can't be bothered to do all of that work, you can just get my Blender files for a dollar on Patreon in the description. I also have a Discord channel for VFX if you guys are interested. There's about 30 members in there at the moment and uh, people kind of go in and share their work. It's really fun. Leave your comments down below for what VFX you'd like to see in the next video and I'll see you guys next time.